Thanks so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed this message brought to you by Friday Night Light Ministries. For more information, check us out on the web at FridayNightLight.us. So I was feeling like now would be the time. I don't. It's just probably found that it's just such a good song. And my, I said to my husband because I was doubting. I was doubting. I was like, can you tell me when you think she should come up? He goes, do silent. He said, now? I was like, are you feeling that too? <laughs> so, Jeannie Ford is going to share her testimony tonight. We're super excited. Come on up. And I'm sure God's timing is perfect because whatever songs follow, I'm sure are just going to match. It's just the way he works, especially here at FNL. So, Thank you. We love you. My name is Janae Ford. And um, so God was telling me a couple months ago to start thinking about sharing my testimony. And last month, I felt that tug. I said, no, God, not yet. Not yet. A couple days later, I was listening to uh, No Longer Slaves, and God said, it is time. So I texted Kara, so I couldn't get out of it. So, and I've never done this before, and i um, very nervous. I wrote everything down um, so I wouldn't forget anything. Um, so I grew up in a very normal Christian family. Um, they took us to church twice a week. We went to church camps. We went to uh, youth group activities. My parents groomed all of us to be good Christians. And then um, life happened, grew up, went out on my own. Um, and then I conformed to the uh, secular world. Um, but I always had God on my mind. He was always there. And I'm, I guess I thought that it was easier to live the secular life. And I was wrong. It was more fun, but it was, it was, I was wrong. It took me many, many years to discover my worthiness of God's love and how important it is to have a relationship with him. Many years. I never blamed God for any bad things that happened. About 20 years ago, um, my dad, who I love very deeply, he developed... Um, Melagliabastoma. It's the worst form of brain cancer that you can have. And um, he was he died in six months, and our our family was heartbroken, and we had to move on with that. A year later, my friend and my brother's fiance she committed suicide, and then it's like boom, okay. And then after that, my sisters. Um, child's father was killed in a car accident. So all these things were happening to our family. And, um, but I, never, I was never mad at God. He was always there. And I never called on him, though. He wanted me to. He wanted me to, but I never did. Um, so... Um, as I grew up, I had, I had always worked in the restaurant industry. I worked in the re industry for many years. And I started as a cocktail server when I was 21 and um, meeting with friends after work and started partying a lot. And I partied like a rock star. Um, so then I then, uh, moved into management and then I slowed down a little bit and I was um, settled down, but the temptation was always there. And um, I was 
I was still drinking, but not that much. And um, then the restaurant that I was working for, I eventually moved up here to Michigan. And um, I met a great man, my husband, um, 13 years on Monday. Yes, thank you very much. So um, life was great on the surface. I was still lacking a relationship with God, though. God was still there. We were still going to church here and there. We were bouncing around from churches. And um, then somewhere, suddenly, I found myself drinking every day. I was going in a downward spiral. I was losing jobs. I was lying. I only cared about one thing. I don't even know how I got there. I just, I got there. I wasn't living the life that uh, God wanted me to live. The devil had his grip on me. I did get sober a couple times, and I got into a 12-step program, but I did go back out. Johnny and I were even in some deep financial trouble. Um... But I only cared about one thing. Alcohol, the devil had me. It was ruining my life, and I knew it. It was ruining my relationship with my friends, with my family. I avoided them. It was ruining my marriage. And most of all, I still had no relationship with Jesus. The devil had me thinking that I wasn't good enough for anything, anything. I, he's a liar. I remember one of the worst days that I had. I remember looking at myself in the mirror and I said, you're ugly, you're stupid. You're never going to be anything. And I said, devil, why don't you just kill me? I said that. And then God had to smack me in the face. He had to do something. Because he loved, he loved me. So... In the midst of all that, he got his grip on me. I got a DUI. I lost my independence. I felt like I was the lowest of low. So I had to pull myself and figure it out, pull myself up and figure it out. What am I going to do? And I got down on my knees and I prayed. I said, Jesus, save me. Save me, Jesus. I was going to make it out, and I was going to turn my life around. That wasn't an option. I was so afraid one day. I was so afraid of the future, what it was going to hold. And it was the midst of everything going on, and... Pastor Mike in church, he said he had a word for someone. He had a word that somebody was consumed with fear. He said, God wants you to give it up. Give it up to him. Just give it to him. And I did. I said, I surrender all. I give it to you. Please save me. I had to give it to him. So I came across this verse, and I kept it at 2 Corinthians 12, 9. But he answered me, my grace is always more than enough for you, and my power finds its full expression through your weakness. So I will celebrate my weaknesses, for when I am weak, I sense for deeply the mighty power of Christ in me. By God's grace and his power and his love, and his goodness. I'm here and I thank you, Jesus. 
I thank you, Jesus. So Wednesday marked um, three years of being sober. So, I'm here to tell you that I have a wonderful life, a wonderful marriage. We live for Jesus. And most of all, I have a relationship with Jesus now, building stronger every day. I feel like I'm growing every day. I still feel like I'm a little baby sometime. But it's all about building that relationship and building the faith. I mean, he's there for me. You can't talk to your best friends 24-7, but I can talk to my best friend 24-7. He's there to protect me, and throughout, his promises are coming true. He's there to protect me. Last Thursday night, I'm a manager at a retail store. Last Thursday night, we were robbed at gunpoint, and I wasn't scared, and I was calm, because the angels were protecting me, and he got us through it. So in my struggles, I have come to realize that believing in God and knowing what he can do He's always there for me, but knowing what he can do and still believing and going out and doing the wrong thing, that's most dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. It is the most dangerous thing. So you have to keep your eyes on Jesus. Yeah. And there are people, and in that video that we saw earlier, there are people in our church who have the addictions and they feel bad for being in church because they want it out. They want something else like I did, but they don't know how to do it. That's why reaching out to them and showing the power of God's love, our love, they can beat it. They can beat it like I did. So with God, all things are possible. Yep. And today, I am ever so grateful that he left the 99 to get to me. So, that's all I have. Okay. I am not who I was. That's awesome. Ooh. Yes. Are you sure? That's so if you enjoyed this message today, be sure to like and subscribe. For more messages or to get plugged in, visit FridayNightLight.us.